Um, we have consulted with town staff and I believe we've addressed all the planning issues. We have a couple of minor um, detailed issues to work out, but nothing I don't think we can overcome with your staff. And so we're here tonight asking that you uh, grant final approval on this. Yeah, one of the things we did ask was the landscaping. You did put some <coughs> landscaping there, but I don't, how, are they berms? What are you, what are you doing with that? Is that just, we see you just got dark. Uh, we do have berms, and if you look at the grading plan, you'll see some, so you'll, you'll, I'm sure you're familiar with the area. There are little islands out there now, much like what's in front of Wendy's. So we've augmented those and, and extended those berms east and west so it's more of a continuous one, similar to what uh, Marina has. Yeah, that was you referred us to those. Mm -hmm. We increased uh, the, the quantity quite a bit, yes. uh, especially if you compare us to the Wendy, uh, Wendy site. Uh, we have several more plantings there. We also added plantings west of the building. We did a lot of uh, larger, taller evergreens there. Um, and some other plantings throughout the site. All right. the, you know, before I forget this one issue, before I get into anything else, there was a gentleman who sent a letter, and I neglected to read it into the record the last time. His concern was he drives a bus with people, elderly people, mm -hmm. and over to the eye doctor. I just read one of these. I'll read it. Just take me a second. He, I work as a bus driver for a local agency and drive a 15 passenger bus. Currently, when I drop people off at the Aki site, which is located next to the Splash Car Wash proposal, I pull into the near or the rear entrance of Aki site from Shoecraft Road and drop people off in the outer road because the drop off area clearance underneath them is uh, too low for buses to pull into. In order to leave without backing the bus up, I pull out through the road connecting to Wendy's, which appears uh, to be going away in this proposal. In order to have a safe exit from Occusite, I suggest an exit road still exists past Splash Car Wash for the bus to turn around and be put in near Ridge Road to allow buses to turn without having to back up uh, into the Occusite parking lot. The Aki site is a whole separate operation than this one here. There's no connection to it. Correct. I did go over there and mentioned it to Josh at our PRC meeting. I went over and took a look at it and actually drove in. And if he comes in the way he says, and if he's listening, I'm sure he is, um, he drives in off the shoe craft, comes in, drops his passengers off. He can continue forward, which would be going north, towards Ridge Road. Mm -hmm. There's another parking lot on the side of the building there at Aki site. You can pull up in a huge blacktop area, which would be no problem, to, in my opinion, for him to turn around. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Oh, yeah. Geez, I'm doing good then, so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I thought he had plenty of room there to make the turnaround, you know, so I think that's a way for him without putting another exit. Or you, you, do you mean on his site? Or do you, because we can't. No, it's on Occupy site. Yeah, I was going to say, because we can't afford to have. No. There are traffic coming into ours. You can appreciate the yeah. operation. You would take the roadway in. Exactly. When he drops them off, just continue forward towards Ridge Road again. Still going that way. Yep. And then when he gets up there, there's plenty of room to make a turn. A huge area. Yeah, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. Yeah. Agreed. yeah. So I, I don't think this really impacts your proposal at all. But I just want to make sure I got this thing into the record. And I think that was all in that regard. Uh, landscaping was an issue. What else do we have? Anything else that was concerned? Signage. Sign, well, signage. Well, the, the signage, we talked about that at PRC. I was looking at you got You got several signs there. We don't want any confusion. Yeah, okay. But once I'm in there, I know I'm in the car wash, right? Mm -hmm. Do I need to have splash on top of every one of those? How about that? You're in the car wash. You know you're in the car wash. You don't need splash. I don't know. That's kind of splash you're looking at. He's talking about the signs. Yeah, sure in there. And, and eliminating the word splash. From the sign. Just take the top off of these things. You've got a bunch of them. Right. Yeah. Directional signs. Quite honestly, the planning, the, our guidelines, the design guidelines for planning for the websites. 
actually eliminates a lot of logo type stuff on gas stations and whatever. Yeah. Are, are you referring to this one or yeah, just I'm referring to these here signs like that? The wayfinding sign. That's what I'm asking about. The wayfinding? Yeah. Yes. No, not the wayfinding. Oh, not your road sign. Okay. No, no, no. That's fine. These signs. These signs. That's it. Can you use the mic and then say your name, please? I'm sorry, David Clements. Uh, <clears throat> First of all, with the splash car wash. Um, yeah, I was just trying to discern which, which signs we're talking about. Yeah. Um, the wayfinding signs are, or how many in the packet that you're holding up there? One, two, three, four, six. Six signs? These six? Yeah, those are the big contracts. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. Directional signs, I'll show you what the car was. Right, you see what I'm saying? So, no. uh, <coughs> I, uh, yeah, I don't, I don't have any issues with conceding those uh, branded signs for uh, directional signs or internal movements as long as we maintain the identity of our yeah, brand. Yeah, your road sign, your monument sign, that's fine. Mm -hmm. And maybe if we could get just the two that meets the public right away, or the, uh, the access road, is so the patrons enter and exit are kind of reminded of their, their brand as they enter and exit. We'll concede the other. Well, I don't know. I don't think you're going to miss the you, need a, you need a variance to get these, this many signs on there? No, because technically they're getting the sign package approved as a part of the site plan approval. So okay. the board has the discretion to okay. determine the number of signs. All right, this is Yeah, if you can eliminate that, you know, the car wash, and, you know, yeah, you've got an exit, entrance, directional, and so on. How about we keep enter exit is branded and everything internally without the brand? Say it again. And so, where, so where are you coming into the site and leave it? You would want the splash logo, but anywhere else? Oh, it's up these guys. So just to eliminate some of the... Sure. Once you go in, you, you pretty much know you're in the car wash. So. <coughs> Where are you guys stick with? I don't think you need them. I don't think you need them. I think you just need to keep it enter, secret. exit. You have that giant thing on the building that you're going to see and you know. So you're keeping it simple? Keep it simple. Okay. Where's the bottom of the The intention is to be out by the Oh yeah, it's 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 number three in the northwest corner. If you look at the site plan, site plan three is this splash limited <coughs> monument sign, it's right in the northwest corner. Very close to the entrance off of this road. Okay, so let's take the one first of all. That, your number three, that's your 
Main letter would say. Correct. How far off the railroad? Oh, he's he's right under their property. He's right under. Well, no, your your right away goes through there. You're probably four or five feet inside of the property line. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're we're going to need to adjust that because it is uh, proposed to be located right over our sanitary sewer main. So we're within the easement, but we're not over the main itself. We we're careful about that location. Okay. Uh, well, if it's in an easement, then it's going to need town board approval. Uh, I would suggest just moving it. To okay. We'll move it back up. Sure. The intention of the two exits is just that people know coming from either direction that that's an exit. That's why we want a double base there, just for everybody passing by to know it's an exit. Um, enter is the same concept, but the one, uh, the one enter sign is redundant in both sides of enter, so we can see 
there to help me. Uh, just to be, just want to make clear that the double lane exit is exit only. You know, that's one that you crystal clear for the car wash patrons. So you don't want cars on their way in trying to turn into that lane. I don't know. I guess where I was going with that is there's eight signs here. I guess. The idea is to minimize the, number one, the size of it and something that isn't necessary on a site. You know if there's an exit sign, that's it. You don't need car wash on top of it. Same with the enter or the directional. Um, this isn't new for us here. This is pretty much written our guidelines. I'm trying to kind of stay consistent with that. Just looking at the way that it's drawn practically, is the sign for the exit sign number six? Is that so the face of the sign is towards the road or is it towards the road? Correct, they'd be perpendicular to travel of the existing road, of the existing roadway by so that in either direction. In this case, east west. No, so so we want cars that are eastbound on the existing road that's out there today to see that sign and not try to turn into that lane, but go to the next set of signs where it says enter. Right. So the westbound one, you know, the traffic from the next to people from the doctor's office. So I say that one may that one may be redundant. Uh, in some respects, the ones that are redundant are really sign seven and eight. Sure. So you can get by just having six and nine and having a splash on the arrows. The only thing I was trying to express earlier is that the proximity of the two, the two exits are more important than two hours. Well, you still have to know it. Correct. The exits, exit only only important. True. It's a question of time. We're just trying to, you know, get the attention here to try to get more than we need is try to be crystal clear on what uh, the circulation is to be without any confusion by the public. You know, Whether or not it has a splash logo over it, I truly appreciate that. It's not necessary by the standards of the town. It's desired by the developer, that's all. So, so do six and eight, six and nine? Yeah, six, six and nine, six and eight is... I appreciate well, that. No, actually, you're right, six and nine, because then you go in and be on your own all the time. Because the Occupy is kind of, I mean, you could 
make a wrong decision in the right Possibly. See, you're going to figure out pretty quick if you get it wrong. These signs, this place is going to glow at night because these are all lit too. Yeah. These aren't just panels. So you're going to have these things lit up. to minimize it. All right, come up with a decision, you guys. The local money engine actually signs with this. Forget the logo. Those, we, just gonna, we just gotta put signs. We can't put all this stuff on there. This is, it's not, you guys gotta go. So we're gonna have an exit, entrance, directionals. No logo on there. Without the logos. Okay, so that's that. Now, move on. Where are we putting what signs? Six or seven or both of them? For the exit only, we need six and seven. Okay, so six and seven are there. Reiterate. Okay, and eight and nine? One or either, either, either order, okay. Whichever one works best for you, fellas? I, I think it's best to drop number eight. Number eight, you have number nine on your right side that go again. I agree. With you. Okay, so you got nine. Because they do have number five on the right side. Now the plus side of this, by doing this also, I mean, let him have these extra ones on it. With the car wash, you can get off the top and minimize this. Yeah, you can get off the top and minimize this. Yeah, you can get off the top and minimize this. The size of the side, so that's a big reduction in the yep. square footage. Square that is the point it's going to be. And we've done this with McDonald's and Burger King and all these places. They've all come with, you know, big signs that they want to put for, like you don't know where you're going to go to the drive up. There's 15 signs you know, directing you around. Um, all right, we good with this? Yeah. yeah. So they've got six and seven and nine of the entrance and exit. Okay. Yep. I don't have an issue with that so much. Just, um, not even signs are okay. And no signs have the logo. Eliminating eight and no signs have the logo. Yeah. Counter wash that is strictly the red uh, sign area. Exit, enter, directional. And you've got vacuum sign. That's the the signage is okay, just eliminating um, the oval design on top of the side. Okay? To be clear, the shape of the sign is okay without the logo? What's that? Is the shape of the sign okay? No, I would just use just the, just the, just the sign. You don't need that up there. Rectangle? The goal is to minimize the size of these. Like that's very good. You know? Thank you. Just keep them down to a, a simple sign. I mean, that would serve no purpose out there anyways, other than just... It doesn't make a difference if it's a rectangle or it's as strong as a whatever um, doesn't Let's matter. Let's see. Probably or square. What else do we have in there? Anything else, Josh? I think if you ever see here, a couple comments. Uh, yeah, there's a few remaining <coughs> outstanding engineering. Yeah, that's all engineering stuff. I mean, Copy of 
Kerosene comes through. I did. Yep. No, nothing that you can't take care of. Nothing at all. Perfect. All right. Now it up. All right. Um, yeah, preliminary. We really didn't have other than the landscaping. There was nothing really. There was adding the extra brick to the front of the yeah, side of the building. They brought the samples. They did design that. Yeah. 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 And the yeah. thing that looks good. You guys are doing just to do the project.
Just a second. That one point you just brought up is something we have to stick with. Once the project is done, your engineer for that project, who said this is where this is and this is where that is, needs to verify all that. So there's that money, however you guys work the money in, now has to be where that engineer is is uh, supported at the end. In other words, where he does a final a final inspection on that, saying everything is done according to what I drew on the drugs. Okay, just to clarify that. I'm sorry. The Yellowstone Market Series we first. The uh, town spots, are you going to be connected to the storm sewer? Well, we're, we're connected to the existing storm system that, that ponds to the southeast, but we're an independent storm sewer system. Uh, subject to the resolution of final approval minutes. Um, subject to uh, the sign package being modified as discussed.
they've changed the logo. So I'm looking to replace the face that's in the existing monument sign. Mm -hmm. And then they had the old style here in USA for the building. Replace that with the new style logo. Everything's going back in the same place as it was. Yes. Well, it has to run the monument sign. It's really all about going into existing sign. Um, and then the other one is going exactly, as you see on your drawing, it's going exactly where the old sign is. Looks like it's open the letters. letters and then it has a, a halo along with it. No. That is a pan that's behind it. That's what's holding it onto the building. Um, it's it's a channel letter. You know what the channel letters are, right? They're all down in the plaza. All the channel letters individual. So their logo is an individual channel letter. And then here in USA, USA has a bit of a sprite mark on the face. That's part of the logo. And then there's a, a like a metal pan behind it. So it's just all face there. No background written on it. It's individual letters. When the old sign comes down, does it need to be cleaned up where that sign was before the new one goes up? Uh, it depends. I mean, it's the sign that's up there now. A lot of times, we'll like power wash or whatever if it needs yeah. to be cleaned up. Okay. Just depends on how tight it was on the wall. <coughs> okay. You good? Tom West requesting to consider the request by applicant for various high systems to install a six square foot panel sign on an existing freestanding <coughs> and a 23.5 square foot building mounted sign associated with Human USA on a 1.26 acre parcel having SBL number 079.18-1-69.112 located at 811 Ridge Road in the MC Medium Intensity Commercial District. The planning board classifies a proposed action as a type 2 action under section 617.5c2 of the state environmental quality review regulations and therefore is not subject to further review. Second. Okay. Mr. Anderson? Yes. Mr. Mixell? Aye. Mrs. Wright? Aye. Mr. Kosel? Aye. Mr. Jardina? Aye. Mr. Hoffman? Aye. Mr. Pichon? Aye. Okay, so I'll we'll make a motion for approval. Second. I'll make a motion for the Year USA signage located at 811 Ridge Road to replace uh, an existing square foot, six square foot panel on an existing uh, freestanding there uh, and a 23.5 <coughs> square foot building mounted, mounted sign. And on the building mounted sign, they're going to clean off for the after they take the old site down before the new one goes up. As presented. Okay, we have a motion. Mr. Mixell? Aye. Mr. Mixell? Aye. Mrs. Wright? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mr. Carabina? Aye. Mr. Malta? Aye. Mr. Kishani? Aye. Okay, well said. Thank you. Corona's Mexican restaurant sign located at 1075 Ridge Road. The applicant, Michael Hodgkin of Job Studio, is requesting sign approval for one 25 square foot building mounted sign associated with Corona's Mexican restaurant on a 1.59 acre parcel located in an MC medium intensity commercial district under section 178-7 of the code of the town of Webster. Yes, sir. Hello. I'm Jim Gardner with uh, Signs by John Studio, and I'm representing uh, Corona's Mexican restaurant. Okay, put 
to say up in the building? Is this lit or is this it's not lit? Just a saying up on the wall. Just a saying. Let's go over where the old saying was there. That's right. And where the old saying was, and John, John's thing there. It's, it's all clean up in there. It's nice looking at it. Okay, it's all right. It's all good. It's ready to go. <laughs> all right. Um, no lights on it. New business. Are they around anywhere now? Yeah, they they've got several restaurants <coughs> in the Rochester area. Really? Uh, under different names, and then they've got some in Michigan and some in Indiana. Oh, no kidding. Uh, there's another Coronas going up in Brockport right now. Mm. Nice. Interesting. Okay. Anybody any issues? Only oh, four. Is there a monument there? Too? Um, one probably. I don't know if they're, put, are they putting, they're not putting one out on the, on the monument sign that's already out there. We haven't, we haven't discussed that with them at all. Okay, so this is all you're just, just okay. for this. Okay. The actual size of the sign is it 48 or 60? 60 by 60. 60 by 60. 60 by 60? That was, I got somebody crossed out 60 and put 48. It's got 48 on it. Yeah. But, but the application was for 60 by 60. Yeah. And so I just wanted to then it showed on the building 60 by 60. So I just wanted to make sure it was 60 by 60. Well, 60 by 60, yeah, that's what it's showing on the, on the photograph there. Yeah. Is that still conforms to the size of the chair? Yeah, they're uh, quite under what they're allowed. Okay, so if it's 60 by 60, put that into a resolution, and then if they make it 4 by 4 the way this drawing shows, you're under and you're okay. We, we did a, um, a temporary sign with a temporary sign permit and that might be the 48 by 48 and i'm not sure about that yeah there's that the, well that's yeah they got a sign down below by the windows right? yeah it's not that it's a banner all right okay all right so five it's five by five all right anybody any issues no no okay you see right there Town Lancer Planning Board consider a request by applicant Michael Hodgins mm -hmm. of John's studio to install a 25 square foot building mounting sign associated with Corona Inspection and Restaurant on a 1.59 acre parcel having SPL number 078.19-3-17 located in an MC medium intensity commercial district. The Planning Board classifies proposed action as a type 2 action under section 617.5C2. The state environmental quality review regulations and of course not subject to further review. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, for Seeker, all in favor, say aye. 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 That's good. So I'll make a motion for the approval. For all the I'll make a motion for the Corona Mexican Restaurant site located at 1075 Ridge Road for a 60-inch by 60-inch building mounted sign, which is now illuminated as presented in. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Mr. Kosel? Aye. Mr. Mixel? Aye. Mrs. Wright? Aye. Mr. Anderson? Aye. Mrs. Jardina? Aye. Mr. Malta? Aye. Mr. Pichoni? Aye. Okay. All set. So, All set. one question. Our, our customer is, uh, they're ready to open. Um, with this approval, can we go ahead and put the sign up, or do we have to wait for a written? Uh, I think probably he's going to get a permit. Yeah. What what will happen is I will uh, fill this out for the remaining information, and our building department will get the permit ready, and we'll call it. Okay. It shouldn't be very much longer. Okay. Than a days. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Okay. Good luck. Okay. Ten twenty four Shoemaker Road accessory structure located at ten twenty four Shoemaker Road. Applicant David Provenzi is requesting preliminary final site plan approval, which includes a public hearing associated with the construction of a nine hundred and sixty square foot accessory structure <coughs> on one point two zero acre parcel located in an R two single family residential district under sections 225-10 and 228-10 of the Code of the Town of Webster. Yes, sir. I am David Valenzi, the homeowner. OK, 
And you're building a really nice garage. I hope so. Just if I'm building. Um, conforms to everything. It looks like it sets on the back. Here was back. He did receive a variance in the zoning board for the location. For your own use? Correct. Anybody any questions, concerns? The water or electric out there? Electric, yes. My pool is attached as next to the garage, so on my pool. Mm -hmm. Is there going to be a room up top or a little lot? A lot, yes. But it won't be like a living space. There's no running water, so I don't think you can live there. And it conforms, it's not taller than the house, right? It's Correct. conforming to what the code calls for, I'm sure you researched it. All right. That's nice, you got a vote. And like, that's, is that basically the color you're using and everything? Correct, it'll be white with black trim. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Anybody? Any issues? No. No, that's 
that's what are you reading like? I'm reading preliminary final approval accessory. All right, preliminary, all right. Final is final is the same as the preliminary. All right. All right. Is that everything, Senator? Uh, 
Um, Tom had the ability to go to construction in the fall, but I think with the wet weather that we get, October, November, December, and the amount of earth that'd be open, he thought it'd be best to just wait till spring and get started on the site work, get it all done and knocked out in one season uh, to avoid any potential issues with erosion or increased costs through that. So with that, we're requesting uh, an extension of the uh, planning board's approval to hopefully allow us to get started in the spring. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board has. Okay, this, this, is, this piece was separate from the duplex session, right? Correct, yeah, this is this is a single family. This is this is like the Meadows yeah, along yeah. Phillips. Yeah, same so texture. Yep. All right, uh, nothing's changed there, right? No, nothing's changed. Uh, it's the same. It's an extension there. All right, and again, this is published. Um, Kyle is telling me this should be as a public hearing. I call so we'll, we'll open it as a public hearing. And if not seeing anyone, we'll close the public hearing. Um, anybody, any concerns or anything with this? When did the, did the original, it hasn't expired yet, has it? Well, the idea is to get it before it expires. Yeah, that's what I was wondering about the uh, date. Yeah, I don't know what the date it's was. Uh, Thursday, I believe. The 6th it? expires. Uh, the 6th. The 6th. The 6th. The 6th. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, nothing's right. changed. And, and he's got a yeah. whole plate. Uh, he's got that uh, duplex uh, subdivision going on right now. So I can understand I'm going to push this off a little bit. Has that started over there, Dave? Oh, yeah. It is? Yeah. Now, that's the one where we were talking about rentals and yeah. all that. But it's got it. Are people moving in? No, he's just getting buildings up right now. All right. We're just starting that. Yeah. All right. Another topic. But, um, all right. Anybody want to make a motion to move the grant of what, another year? Yeah. I'll make a motion that the uh, uh, Meadows Two subdivision extension be approved for a period of one year from this date, which is that would make it what October fourth. Should it be as it be October sixth or a year from the one the one does expire? Okay, we'll make it that year right now. October sixth.